welcome back to the channel where we get out of our comfort zones by watching videos you normally wouldn't watch. Today we're going to be watching and reacting to Food Theory Chuck E. Cheese Pizza. Should you be scared? Let's find out. Nope, not scary. <laughs> <sighs> just sad. Okay, everyone, listen up. I've been doing a lot of FNAF episodes over on Game Theory, alright? A yeah. lot. Some might even say too many. So if you want to make me scream, it's gonna take more than jump scares and a creepy pizza joint. Come at me with something new, something fresh, something different. Well, if you want something fresh. Nightmare Mangle, you have the floor. That pizza you're eating is recycled from used pizzas. Yeah! We took random pieces the other patrons left behind, stuck them together to make a quote-unquote New pizza for ya! Uh, uh, uh. This is so well done. Oh my gosh, who is working at the Food Theory, Game Theory, Film Theory's channel? I wish I had those skills. Uh, uh. Remember from our last reaction video? Matt Pat did say that in his food theory videos, he puts the Fazbear logo or sign on one of the buildings. Yeah, if you zoom in really quick, it, it goes by really fast, but you have to kind of be looking for it. But it is on the left side here. So that's cool. I've never seen it before. internet welcome to food so theory funny. where a theorist can be a theorist if your upbringing was anything like mine the go-to place for birthday parties when you were a kid was chuck e cheese or showbiz pizza if you harken back to the olden days like i do special honorable mention to discovery zone you were great but definitely a lot more birthday parties at chuck e cheese gotta admit i mean what is not to love here chuck e cheese has it all games ball pits slightly creepy animatronic bands employees walking around in character suits and of course, pizza. And that, my friends, is where today's theory begins, because there's a bizarre rumor that's been floating around the internet about the pizza served at Chuck E. Cheese, and it's been out there for over a decade. Blows my mind that this hasn't been proven or disproven yet. The theory is that if somebody at Chuck E. Cheese doesn't finish their whole pizza, the employees take it to the back, take those pieces off the tray, and then use them to form a new pizza to serve to customers. All of it is a means to save money. Now, why the heck would would people think anything when I was a kid I didn't really look too close at pizza that I was being served I just wanted pizza and if it was in front of me I was gonna eat it so I wonder how this theory actually came to be it had to start somewhere right did someone notice something when they were being presented their pizza for the birthday party or something did an employee leak out information about this and created this whole conversation around it? nearly this crazy. That is a bold claim to be making because it is definitely illegal for a restaurant to secretly reserve leftovers to a different customer. But if you look around online, the quote-unquote evidence is there. Picture after picture after picture online documenting the strangely shaped Chuck E. Cheese pizza phenomenon. But anyone can get presented two pizzas, two different pizzas, three different pizzas, and then their party eats some of everything, whatever they have left, join together, and then take a picture and say, oh, the theory is right. So people can be lying too. It is the internet. Slices that are different lengths, crust edges that don't line up, pepperonis that just don't match. But it was a little over a year ago when this conspiracy theory blew up big time here on YouTube. When a YouTuber who shall not be named went to Chuck E. Cheese to quote unquote investigate the issue by ordering two pizzas and to find that he did indeed receive some janky looking results. 40 million views later, the damage was done. Chuck E. Cheese is now filing for bankruptcy and becoming the literal embodiment of Five Nights at Freddy. Is that what happened? Is that why you barely see any Chuck E. Cheese restaurants out? I didn't know like a YouTuber was behind that. That's a lot of power to have. Social media has so much power to 
shut down businesses. Very, very scary. Freddy's. Don't get me wrong, I think there are a lot of reasons for their financial difficulties. Declining interest in arcade-style restaurants in an era of accessible free video games, world pandemics keeping people out of stores, the fact that the robots legitimately look like they want to eat our souls, thereby spawning generations of children with animatronic nightmares. But, you know, rumors of broken health codes and recycled pizza definitely ain't helping their bottom line. So what is going on here? Looking around the internet, there seems to be plenty of evidence that Chuck E. Cheese serves pizza that look stitched together. But from where I'm sitting, what seems to be lacking is real evidence of slice recycling. I've yet to see any footage, for instance, of a Chuck E. Cheese employee carrying a pizza back into the kitchen. And let's be honest, in this age where anyone can doctor a photo for upvotes on Reddit, where yeah. judgment happens after reading a headline rather than reading the whole article, where all the evidence that you need to prove something is an N of one, something smells wrong here. And I'm not just talking about the dead bodies stuffed inside of the suits. There are plenty of unanswered answered questions in this Chuck E. Cheese conspiracy, and we here at Food Theory aim to answer those questions today. I want to know what the corporate response from Chuck E. Cheese was, for one thing. Perhaps they have a perfectly sane explanation for it. I'm also curious to know whether Chuck E. Cheese's pizzas still look like this in 2020, over a year after they got put on blast by the internet. Have they changed their ways now that the eyes of the world are off of them, or are they confident that they have nothing to hide? Also, do pizzas at every Chuck E. Cheese restaurant turn out this way? Like, how common is this. And above all else, I want to know why. Why are the pizzas turning out to look all mismatched? Whether it's shady or not, there has to be a reason for it. And I intend to determine what that reason is once and for all. Because rumors like this can do real damage. And if these yeah. rumors are indeed unfounded, then the internet needs to know, because that would mean Chuck E. Cheese is really getting the short end of the awkwardly sized pizza slice. In the aftermath of that massive Chuck E. Cheese video, CEC Entertainment, Chuck E.'s parent company had this to say, quote, no conspiracies here. Our pizzas are made to order and we prepare our dough fresh in restaurant, which means that they're not always perfectly uniform in shape, but always delicious, end quote. Okay, but no one was really doubting that the dough was prepared in restaurant. Yeah. Like, the PR team, they saw people sharing these photos online, and they watched the video exposés, and that was the accusation that they felt like they needed to defend themselves against? I mean, fresh dough is fine. I've had fresh dough from plenty of pizza places. I've made fresh dough myself. But those pizzas, including my own janky pizzas, never look as haphazard as these. Even in my worst-looking pizzas made at home, I have never had a fresh dough look that just randomly juts out like this at awkward, sharp angles. It just doesn't happen that way. The stuff about the shape not being uniform misses the point entirely. This isn't about the fact that Chuck E. Cheese pizzas aren't perfectly round. It's that the pizzas don't look cohesive like every other pizza in existence does. The pieces straight up look like they originated from different pies. You can't expect me to believe the reason that this pizza's perimeter looks the way it does is because that Chuck E. Picture, Cheese yes, makes their janky. dough, quote, fresh in restaurant. That's entirely irrelevant to what we're talking about here. All you guys it had to do was say we everything. do not recycle other consumers' pizza. And you didn't do that. Suffice it to say, CEC's statement has a glossy PR feel to it that doesn't quite put my concerns at rest. By the way, the recycled slices fiasco isn't the only scandal plaguing Chuck E. Cheese at the moment either. In May, reports emerged that Chuck E. Cheese was selling its pizzas under a pseudonym on delivery apps. By rebranding themselves dude yes i told you guys this in our last five nights at freddy's reaction video well at least that's what i heard and then i repeated it to you guys but yeah that's crazy right as Pascali's Pizza and Wings on Grubhub and other apps, CEC essentially found a way to trick adults into buying Chuck E. Cheese pizza. After they got caught, and got caught, of course they no did, a company spokesperson now. admitted to the pseudonym, but insisted that the pizzas from Pascali's, which happens to be the name of another member of Munch's make-believe band, the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band, were slightly different, having a thicker crust and more sauce. The spokesperson conceded, however, that Pascali's pizzas are made in the same kitchen kitchen as Chuck E. Cheese's pizza with the exact same ingredients. <laughs> oh, what a bad look. So Chuck E. Cheese has weathered more scandals in the past couple of years they than tried. any wholesome pizza place for kids should. But are the scandals of their own making? Does Chuck E. Cheese deserve to get dragged like this? I just can't bring myself to believe that any multinational restaurant chain could do something so dangerous, so mm. brazenly illegal as intentionally recycling leftover pizza slices. Like, I don't care how much of a cheap 
cheapskate you are, that is just a new level of low. Perhaps there's a benign explanation for why their pizzas look all Frankenstein together. Like, maybe they stitch together slices from fresh pizzas rather than used pizzas. Sure, it'd be a weird company policy, but it's no weirder than recycling slices and sending them through the oven twice. What I'm saying is that the recycled slices theory is a bold accusation with potential legal ramifications. If recycling slices is company-wide policy, I have to believe employees would be sounding the alarm about it loud and clear. So what I want is evidence of wrong- Well, it depends what kind of employees Chuck E. Cheese is aiming to hire. Because are they aiming to hire like younger kids who don't really care or know any better and just follow instructions so that they can get away with these types of things? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Getting into my own theories here. Doing. I want to see those leftover slices actually get carried back into the kitchen because photos of strange looking pizzas just aren't enough. Sure, it looks as though their crust edges don't line up, but what gives me pause is that the interior points of each slice are scattered about. That is to say, the crust edges might line up if the pieces were arranged with the points touching at the middle. Same goes for the pepperoni halves that don't line up. For one thing, I feel like some of those could have just been pushed down by the blade into the crevices between slices. For another, I've cut enough pizzas to know that sometimes one of those pepperoni halves will just stick to the blade. So we yeah. here at Food Theory did what we always do when we need more info. We ran an experiment ourselves. Now all the Chuck E. Cheese dining rooms near us were closed due to COVID, so we can only go inside for takeout orders. Let's go get some pizza, oh gosh, shall we? If I don't come out, Chuck just assume I was stuffed inside of an animatronic suit, okay? And can I just say, being inside a vacant Chuck E. Cheese restaurant had a <laughs> real weird. FNAF vibe to it. Of course, doesn't say anything about their pizza, but hey, I can't just let Five Nights at Freddy's stuff slide without many Mentioning it. Innocent construction project or building a sister location underneath Chuck E. Cheese? Hmm. Mysterious construction out front? You know it's an underground bunker. Now, in an effort to get reliable results, we expanded upon internet experiments by looking at a larger number of pizzas from numerous restaurants across multiple days. Steph and I tackled the East Coast, while food theory field researcher and Tootsie Pop champion Amy covered the West Coast. Amy, I might add, wasn't quite as creeped out by the empty restaurants as I was. It's Chucky, it's Chucky, it's Chucky, between the two of us, we ordered 10 pizzas from five different Chuck E. Cheese locations. We also made sure to get the pizzas in a variety of different ways. Some we picked up as takeout, some we ordered on various delivery apps. We even ordered a couple pizzas from Pascali's Pizza and Wings, just to see what the heck is up with that one. I was especially curious to see how many of the pizzas, if any, would look stitched together. Obviously, the eyes of the world have been on Chuck E. Cheese for the past couple of years, so I was curious to see whether the restaurant capitulated and changed their pizza-making process as a result. And as soon as we opened the boxes, we had our answer. Chuck E. Cheese has made zero changes. Their pizzas look the way that they've always looked, which is janktacular. It definitely looks like this piece doesn't belong. It looks like this piece doesn't belong, but it's actually like hard. Either Chuck E. Cheese does kind of stitch their pizzas together, or they just do a really bad job in distribution of ingredients. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm a little nervous to see what the final result is in this theory. It just, I don't know why, but it makes me nervous. I don't want to believe that they're doing this on purpose. To jigger it into a shape that looks like it should be the pizza shape. In all, I'd say three of the ten pizzas had that Frankenstein equality to them. It's clearly it's not really? your prettiest pizza. And the delivery method had nothing to do with it. The reason we ordered some of them as takeout was just so we could eliminate any jostling from the delivery process as a variable. Steph and I opened a pizza box right there outside of the restaurant in the parking lot, and it had crust and pepperonis that didn't line up. So I am confident that whatever is happening in these pizzas, it's happening in the kitchen. That means if we're gonna Dude. crack this mystery, we need to get eyes in the room where it happens, the room where it happens so team theorist reached out if you guys haven't seen hamilton you guys should see it i know a lot of you guys who watch my videos are younger but i think you would enjoy hamilton it's really good
to two real-life Chuck E. Cheese employees for interviews. One of the interviewees, who requested to go by their Reddit username, The Hoove, was a CEC employee at two different Chuck E. Cheese locations in two different cities, and worked there years before the viral video that set this conspiracy theory on fire. The other, who also asked to go by their Reddit username, Classy underscore Corpse, is a current employee who began working after that viral video was released. Both have experienced bussing tables at Chuck E. Cheese, meaning if the recycled slices theory is or was ever CEC policy, they would have been specifically responsible for taking the slices back into mm. the kitchen. Furthermore, both employees have some first-hand knowledge of the kitchen and the pizza-making process. The two written interviews were conducted independently of one another, yet we received similar answers from both of our interviewees, who both completely rejected the notion that Chuck E. Cheese might recycle their slices. According to the current CEC employee, quote, the recycled pizza is definitely a myth. Believe me, even the staff would never think of doing such a thing. And the former employee agreed, writing, quote, no, having worked at two different locations, I have never seen ever anyone even think this was a good idea. It just isn't worth it to CEC to do this. They were equally unified yeah. in their responses when we asked about the possibility of leftover food being taken back to the kitchen. Both employees agreed that it's something that just doesn't happen. CEC entertainment policy is that leftover food be thrown out in the thank you boxes, aka their name for the trash bins in the dining room and oh, game yeah. floor areas. And the current CEC employee explained that this policy is followed by employees. Quote from them, when I bust the tables, we dump any excess food in the trash bins out on the game room floor. We don't bring any food back to the kitchen unless someone demands to reheat their pizza to which we have to oblige. And our own field experiments support these claims. Remember, we ordered all of our pizzas during lockdown. I even bought myself a Chuck E. Cheese face mask as a keepsake. <laughs> there are so obviously some downsides to doing an experiment during a pandemic, but in this case, it actually helped us. Because the dining rooms are closed at every restaurant that we ordered a pizza from, we know for a fact that none of our 10 pizzas came from other customers' leftovers. Because That's there true. are no customers in the restaurant to leave leftovers. COVID actually allowed us to control an entire van- So Chuck E. Cheese just sucks at making pizza that otherwise we couldn't have controlled. And as a result, when we opened our pizza boxes and saw Frankensteiny looking pizzas, it really told us something. It told us that there is no way that leftovers are part of this mystery. When leftovers are removed from the equation, Chuck E. Cheese's pizzas just still come out looking like this. So there must be another explanation. I'm sorry for ever doubting you, Chuck. It's okay, Matt Pat. I forgive you. However, before I list the recycled slices theory as 100% theorist certified false, there is a huge question left to answer. Why do the pizzas come out looking yeah. so mismatched? Like, there are a gazillion other pizza companies out there. Why is it that Chuck E. Cheese is, like, the only one in existence? Maybe it's kind of like the, like, influencers on Instagram or influencers in general that cause beef or drama with other influencers just to get their name out there and for people to tune in and find out who they are and get more publicity. Maybe that's what it is. That's kind of how Chuck E. Cheese stands out. All right, let's just see what Matt Pat has to say. Existence to have these freaky looking ones. The current CEC employee we interviewed had a surprisingly simple answer for this. An answer that I kind of feel like CEC Entertainment should have just come out and said for themselves when this whole conspiracy theory hit the fan a couple years ago. According to the employee, quote, the uneven topping look comes from the blade we use. The rocking blade has next to no edge on it for safety reasons. Therefore, it's an absolute pain when it comes to cutting pizzas with it, which is what gives it the Frankenstein look, if you will. If you want to find the other half of your pepperoni slice, it slipped to the inside okay that may answer the pepperoni situation unevenness but that doesn't answer the actual slices one being shorter than the rest to the cut. And the former employee added that the process of transferring the pizzas from the cooking rack onto the cutting board and finally onto the serving tray is also contributing to the jostled appearance that some of the pizzas have. Our field experiments support these claims as well. Food theory field researcher Amy specifically noticed that the Chuck E. Cheese slices were surprisingly lightweight. They didn't have a lot of sauce or cheese holding the pieces together. So I will say this. These pieces of pizza don't seem very weighty. They don't have a lot of crust to them. They don't have a lot of toppings, even if you ask for extra. And so I feel like like when they're getting cut up if it's done really roughly it's really easy to just 
throw these pieces of pizza around. So it all comes down to the pizza rocker that they use to cut the pieces. The blades are dull, and as a result, they wreck the pizzas more than a sharpened blade otherwise would. Ironically, it's a safety Maybe. policy that Chuck E. Cheese has in place that's led to a conspiracy theory accusing them of serving unsafe pizza. Now, remember how we also got those pizzas from Pascali's Pizza and Wings? The pizzas that CEC Entertainment claims are thicker, have more sauce? Well, since they're being prepared in the exact same kitchen as Chuck E. Cheese pizzas, that means Pascali's Pizza should hold up better against the dull pizza rockers being used in those kitchens. After all, it's more substantial and has more sauce holding the pieces in place, right? And that's actually exactly what we found. Neither of the pizzas delivered from Pascali's really showed any frankenstein -y attributes, whereas three of the eight of the Chuck E. Cheese pizzas did. So there you have it, friends. The Chuck E. Cheese Recycled Slices Conspiracy Theory. I'm not, I'm not 100% satisfied with that one. I just don't understand how that rocker can create such a size difference in the slice. Like, I don't know. And then plus their audience is kids. And like I said, kids don't pay attention to what the pizza looks like. It's just all about them getting pizza and playing games. So maybe that's why they don't really care how it looks. This one got me thinking a lot more. But that's it for our reaction. Thanks for watching. I've got